everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. And one of the last videos I talked about me starting a new project where I was going to go into discus and go back to my roots. And we cleaned up these tanks here that you can see, getting ready to get some discus. The idea being that they are a fish that's very dear to my heart. It's what got me properly started in the hobby. And I'm going to get some generic discus from a very small size, see if I can grow them on. Uh, get the best out of them, talk about all the requirements they have, see if we can get some to pair up, go into breeding, do all those kind of things, and just take you all through that journey. And maybe the thing that got me into them, got me fascinated by them, you'll catch some of that as well. So today is step one in that process. So I'll get this in early now. If you want to follow along, there is a button down there you can click to subscribe and you won't miss any of these updates. So step number one, get some discus. So I have done that and they're over here. So to that end, I have ordered three boxes of fish. Now they're not all discus, but there are discus in here. Um, the more you get, the cheaper it is. That's my logic anyway. So box number one, these aren't the first fish that I've ordered from this supplier. Um, and I'm really impressed with the boxes. They're nice poly boxes, but good. A couple of heat packs, no heat left in them. But hopefully they'll have done their thing. Um, let's see what we've got. So first fish is a discus that I've pulled out. Um, well, I've gone for two types of discus for myself. These are um, red turks, essentially. And I've got six of each and they're individually packed, which is nice. So I'm going to put these bags in straight away and float them because they're not the warmest. Um, and we'll get them up to temperature. Another two red turks. These are quite small fish, but that's the point of this video is to get small ones and grow them on. But they're a little bit lethargic, obviously, they're a little bit cold, but they're okay. Next up, something that isn't part of the discus project. Now, you might remember Gordon from uh, past videos. He was one of my uh, fish that lived in Mega Tank over here. Mega Tank being my DIY eight foot by four foot by three foot aquarium. And he was an emperor snakehead that unfortunately passed away a couple of months back. So, we've got this, a baby one. Now, Gordon was like two and a half feet long. This one is like five centimeters. Um, the Chana Moralides, 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 don't know how to say it. Emperor Snakehead, but a teeny weeny weeny one. So, get him for a grow out tank. And this is a bit of a theme for today's video as well. We've got a few more fish for Mega Tank that we're going to grow out and grow on. Namely, these. So this is a fish I've wanted for a long time that I've found hard to get because when people get them they tend to keep them, obviously. Again, a tiny little version. But this is a peacock bass, a kilberry. We've got three of these. Um, again, quite a small one, but we're going to grow them out and get them into mega tank and give them forever homes. And as much as they're tiny little fish, they're quite active in the bag already, so that's really good. Oh yes, and then these ones here. Um, we've got 25 of these. Um, this is for a tank upstairs, so upstairs I've got my main display tank in the house. is a goldfish tank at the moment, so I've been keeping lots of cold, cool water temperate fish. Um, so I've added to them, I've put some zebra daniels in recently, but I've also got a bunch of these. So we've got 25 each of gold and normal white clouds, mountain minnows. Um, fantastic little fish, so, so cool to watch. And a big group of them in a big tank, I think is going to look really good. And then we've got a couple of brilliant turks, uh, which aren't for me. They're for Scott, for channel members will know. Our subscribers, Scott is one of my moderators. And he's ordered a couple of brilliant discus. So they are there in there. But I shall pack them away separately. That's box number one, done. Oh, box two is a bit heavier. Right, again, all looks good. What have we got in this one? These are the other white clouds, so another 25 white clouds. Give me 50 in total. 25 gold, 25 silver. Some more discus. Uh, so these are the second lot that I've got. Um, so I've gone for red turks and red covers. Now, it's very little point showing you them like this because they won't colour up both because of age and the fact that they've travelled so far. I mean, they look healthy enough in that they're quite active in there. And that's really what you... The only thing you can hope for at this point is that they're not dead. Uh, you, you want them to be active. 
um, and then you can get them up to temperature in your tanks. I will be going for the plop and drop technique, which we'll talk about later once I get them in there. So we've got a bunch of Corridoras. Are they still Corridoras? Who knows? Um, Aeneas, these are for Scott. So he's got a bunch of these. Again, all swimming about, looking happy and healthy. Not the warmest, but they'll soon warm up in here. The ambient temperature in here should do a, a treat. And then they should survive a couple hours in the cars back to him. Uh, here we've got 10 um, Cardinal Tetras. Again, these are for Scott. Looking okay. Yeah, not coloured up at all, but these are the Colombian ones. Um, in fact, the bag's steaming up because it's so warm in here and these are quite cold. But yeah, they're all okay. Next we've got uh, Hastatus, and a, another set of Corridoras. These are very, very small, as you would expect. Um, tell if you can see them. But again, lots of them all moving around. Zero floaters. That's what we want to see. Silver flying foxes. And these are fish that I've done to do a job, which is something I always say. Don't buy fish to do a job for you. To make your own effort. Um, but these are to help me with black beard algae. Oh, I'm kind of gutted about this. So this is one of Scott's fish, which I can't see because they've used one of those bags with a black in it. So it kind of helps them with traveling, but he's bought a couple of wild type discus, some greens, tepes and heckles. So that's one of them. Maybe I could just sneak that in, say it didn't come. And then a big bag here of Colombian textures of these. Yes, these are Colombian textures again for Scott. Quite a good size, these ones. Again, very active in the bag. Everything looking really healthy. This is good, good stuff. And that is box number two. <laughs> Last box. I like this, it's exciting. Like a kid in Christmas, because I can't remember what I ordered exactly. These heat packs have still got some heat in them, so that's good. Um, oh, this is one of the ones Scott ordered. So this is a Heckle Blue, which you can see, but again, it's quite a small one, so there's not much to see there. It doesn't look like a heckle. Heckles are normally... Uh, it's the big, thick bar in the middle that determines the heckleness. Heckleness? Is that a word? But obviously that comes with age and time. What are these? Another of my Calberry Peacock Bass. That's going in there. Another discus. Uh, this is another, oh, this is a bit slightly bigger, another of the heckles that Scott's ordered. I don't know why they've gone straight into the corner as soon as I picked them up, but yeah. Good looking fish, nice shape, even for such a small size. That's a nice one as well, another heckle blue. So three of them. Getting bigger each time, each one I bring out gets bigger. This one, one of the red covers for me. Another red cover. And the last one's in here. There's two of these, again, with the big black bar, so you can't really see anything. These are some teffy, some wild type discus, um, which I can just about see. Um, a medium large size. These are some, going to be some lovely fish, but unfortunately, you're not going to see them in this video. Final bag. Uh, Trichopsis. Oh, these are the. Some Grammys. Um, who? <laughs> I'm not the biggest fan of Grammys. No offense, Brian. You're still cool. Um, but hey, these are quite cool, I suppose. Again, all looking good. So that's all the fish out. I'll let them acclimatize or acclimate, depending where you come from. Uh, just getting them up to temperature, and then I'm going to do the plop and drop method to get them in. I'll explain about that in a while. But I shall just pack up Scott's fish um, so as they can stay out of the way, ready for him to come and collect. So everything's been floating in their bags for around about an hour. Um, I had some stuff to do, so they just got a bit longer to get up to temperature. Um, as I mentioned earlier, I'm more of a plop and drop kind of guy. That's my preferred way of getting fish into their tanks. All that means is I match the temperature and then I get them in. I don't do drip acclimation. Um, 
I might if they were a more sensitive fish or there was hugely wild differences in water parameters and things like that, but I've had fish from here before, it's not really been a problem. Um, what I would normally do, would I'd, I'd take the bag, so for instance this bag here, slice it open, pour the water out through a net to catch the fish and then net the fish in. But the tanks that I'm putting all these fish in today actually, um, there's no other fish in there so I'm quite happy to just put the water in as well. The reason you might not want to put the water in is because it tends to be a bit more chance of it being fouled. Um, because the fish are in here um, in a tight enclosed space, being stressed out. You might not want all that in there, but it's going to get diluted to a large degree uh, in the tank. So I just want to get them out and get them in. So another final visual check to make sure all the fish are okay, no floaters or anything. Everything looks good. These are the shell dwellers actually, I didn't, don't think I, I mentioned them. Um, Lamprologus melagris. Um, if you've been watching for a while, you know I tried to get shell dwellers last time and they didn't do very well, they didn't come across. And there was a few DOAs and ultimately they all perished, but these ones look nice and big and healthy. So, like I say, I'm just going to get them in. That's my main thing here. And um, Why I don't like doing the, the drip acclimation thing is I have had bad experiences of doing it. It tends to be when fish have been shipped, especially for a long distance, the ammonia that the fish release in the bag isn't too toxic while it's in the bag, but as soon as you open that bag and the oxygen rushes in, that's when it can have a massive swing. And that, that can often shock, and I have had it happen in shock fish and kill fish. And that's the opposite of what we want, isn't it? So that's what we do, we get them in nice and quick. So it's just a case of repeat that process. So another notable thing here is, obviously I talked about these white clouds going up into my big tank upstairs. I'm keeping everything in the fish room for a while because I want to spend at least a few days, if not weeks, uh, just observing them, making sure that everything's healthy, there's no problems, because it's easier to treat things here now before I move them into their final destination. Uh, and I think it's just good to, it's quarantining essentially, but it's good to do this quarantining process just to observe and see what's going on before you start mixing fish, which is why I try and have tanks that they can all go into alone, even if that's not ultimately where they'll end up. We're back the day after, um, they, they've done overnight, all the fish are eating, everyone's doing really well. I'm going to concentrate on the discus now, but if you want to see uh, any or all of the other fish that we got, uh, let me know in the comments, we can make more videos about that. Or come and join me on my Friday night live stream at 9pm UK time, we can talk about them there. But we're going to concentrate on the discus, because this is the first of my discus series, if you like. Um, and I purposely bought these from a wholesaler because you do get a bit of a mixed bag, you don't know what you're getting, so I have got a mixed bag. I've got different qualities of fish, I've got different standards, all within the same thing. So my number one tip is usually go to a specialist. If you're interested in discus, uh, go to a specialist, someone that concentrates on that and nothing else. The fish that you see at pet shops aren't always the highest quality and sometimes that's just not a snobby thing it's like a, a health thing so you're not going to get the best out of those fish because they've already been stunted they've already had a bit of a rough start um, but hopefully with these I can show you what kind of things to look out for so you really if you can't go to a specialist uh, in the UK there are plenty we'll talk about them later if you want to know come again join me in the live stream we'll talk about what specialists use the good ones and the bad ones uh, but yeah get recommendations of where to go and they will usually uh, they, their reputation will be damaged if they send out bad fish so if they don't let you go and hand select them you're going to get a better experience but if you're going to a shop and that's your only option or that's what you want to do or you found some really good prices there are some things to look out for when you're selecting your fish now these are really small fish and um, typically if you're new to it you get a better experience if you buy bigger fish because fish of this size they still have quite a lot of care requirements that are quite intense so they're going to need several feeds a day they're going to need lots of water changes to get the best out of them um, and you can even tell with some of these ones that they've already shown, some of them are showing some signs of being a bit stunted because what you want to look out for is, if you get to select it, is a fish that's active. So is it coming up to the glass? Is it hiding away? Because um, you want the ones that are more active, swimming around, looking bright, looking interested. If you see a fish that's kind of hanging out at the back, 
hiding behind something, swimming at the top, just kind of generally lethargic looking, avoid that one. You also want to look at the shape of the fish. So they're called discus because they're meant to be round. Now it's a little bit harder to tell with fish of this size, so definitely with fish that are a bit bigger it's easier to tell, but they shouldn't be arrow shaped. So you'll see some of these ones, they do have a little bit of an arrow shape. That might be something we can make them fill out with some good care from now on, but sometimes the damage has already been done by the time you're looking at it. Um, so you want a rounder fish, you don't want something that's a pointy arrowhead shape. The next thing I like to look at is looking at the, the head area. So the area, if you were to draw a vertical line through its eye, from the top of its head to the bottom of its chin, I know these are not things fish have. They don't have four heads and chins as such. But if you were to draw a line through there, if the eye takes up a greater proportion of that space, so if there's not much space above the eye and below the eye, that's a good sign of a stunted fish and stunted is going to be harder and harder to undo and sometimes impossible to undo so you're not going to get the best out of that fish they might live a perfectly happy healthy life they're just not going to be the highest quality fish so definitely if you're interested in showing them that's ones to avoid um, but it also makes them a little bit stronger in my experience as they get older because they are a sturdier fish, they're hardier if they've got the best start in life. So also when looking at them straight on, if you see their foreheads, again, hopefully you know what I mean, the space above their eye, I prefer that to be a little bit fatter. If it's pinched in a little bit, again, you might be able to reverse it, but it's you're adding extra work to yourself. So you want to pick something that's got all those features. It's active, it's not got clamped fins. When I say clamped fins, you can see that they've just like closed them down on themselves. It's active, no clamped fins, it's swimming around. Looking at the eye size, you don't want the eye to be too big in proportion to the rest of the head. And see if you can find one with a fat forehead. It's not pinched in at all. Other than that, the general shape is the only other thing you can go off of. And looking at it in comparison to the other fish, that's available as well, it's sometimes a good indicator. Often, if you see a tank full of discus in a fish shop, they will be from the same generation, from the same batch. So if they're all roughly this size, and then there's one that's that size, don't get the small one. There's, there's a problem there, avoid that. And this is all about trying to get you to have the best chance with the hobby, because there's a very rewarding fish, but it can be very off-putting when you don't um, get what you want. Another thing worth noting is that you might be researching discus online and seeing pictures of the adults. So in here we've got some red covers and some red turks. They don't look like they look on the internet. They don't look like they look as adults because they don't get that coloration and that pattern until they're a bit older. You'll see it starting to come through, um, but these red covers, they will darken with age and be more red, develop halos, things like that. The red turks will have more pronounced striping and patterns. Um, so don't be put off that you can't see immediately those really striking colours and patterns because you, you just won't get them in fish of that size. So that's my project. So we're going to see what we can do um, to grow these out. So the best practices here are multiple feeds of high quality foods and multiple water changes. That gives them the best chance to grow at the, the, the highest rate that's healthy for them. So if you want to follow along and see how I do and what problems we face along the way, click that subscribe button down below. It'll help, really help me out, help the channel out. It's something like 60% of the people that watch this aren't actually subscribed. So that would be really useful. I think it's gonna be a really interesting project and we'll see lots of different facets of being a disc keeper along the way. Um, and if there's anything you want to see in particular, let me know in the comments. And then possibly the next video about this will be about these fish. This is my discus pair. These are the pair out of my breeding tank. I have had fry off them before. Um, so we'll get to see a little bit of growing on youngsters, producing youngsters. That's the idea anyway. So if you like that kind of thing or are in any way interested in this little project or any of the other ones we've got on in the fish room, we've got plenty of tanks here with plenty of different things to interest you. Click that subscribe button. Let me know what you think in the comments. Let me know anything you're particularly interested in or want to cover in this and we'll cover it in future videos. But thank you very much for watching. See you on Friday night, 9 p.m. UK time if you want to join in the live stream. If not, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.